us. And so let's keep it, let's keep it cool. Let's not get in a panic. And um, buy wisely. You know, if you go into the store, I did see today, I saw some trucks heading into Walmart. So today Walmart may be getting new supplies of toilet paper. Now the great thing about this virus is I think it's teaching us some lessons. 95% um, of the toilet paper manufactured comes out of the U.S., which is a really cool thing. Most of the medicines we take are manufactured in China. So maybe it's time we bring our manufacturing back to the U.S. Maybe it is time that we open plants and we serve ourselves rather than being served by others in a communist foreign country. And how could we possibly trust them to make all the toys and all the things that we share with our children and our families? Why don't we think about this as maybe the Lord opening a door to America wake up, bring your manufacturing home, start making your own products, start employing your neighbors, and start taking care of business without all the regulations that were thrown to us in previous administrations. President Trump has made it possible to once again do business in America. This should be our wake-up call. Let's take care of business in America. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's provide the food for us. Let's provide the products for us. And certainly, we have amazingly smart scientists. Let's provide our own medicine. Because if you think about it, all these vitamins and all these nutrients that I've been taking, they're manufactured in China. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I trust those people to, to medicate me. So I think we should wake up. I think this is time. I think we should be cautious. I think we should be protective of our family and our children and certainly of our elderly parents. So let's take care of business, but let's do it putting America first. And that means bringing manufacturing home. And you know, I'm sure China is so ticked off at us because our president has cost them a lot of money making them pay for things that were normally given to them. And they've had to send us billions of dollars that they really didn't want to send. So. Did they start this Wuhan virus? I don't know. You know, they're calling it C-19, they're calling it this, they're calling it that. Call it what it is, it's a Wuhan virus that started there and it has spread worldwide now. But when we think about it, in October, and our preacher kind of laughed at me because I don't shake hands, I don't hug, I don't do none of that stuff after October because it's flu season. Once I get my flu shot, I'm over the hugging stuff. And I don't do it again until April. So they've kind of laughed at me, but now they're not laughing too hard because I'm all about don't touch it if you don't need to. You know, again, wipe your steering wheel down on your car, wipe your door handle down. And, and the worst thing I've seen in all this mess, I went to pump gas in Jasper on, I believe it was Friday. And I'm pumping my gas and I'm being very cautious and I'm using things not to touch the handle and I'm being very cautious. I wipe my credit card down after I use it. And then a lady in a nursing uniform pulls up beside me and she steps out and she has a $20 bill in her mouth. And I thought, oh my gosh, of all the germs running around the world today, the one thing that is always full of germs is money. And I watched this young lady in her nurse's uniform pumping gas with her money stuck in her mouth. And I almost got sick. I almost walked over there and said, I know you're not thinking clearly because you're probably stressed out and you've worked a long shift and you're tired. But get that money out of your mouth. But I didn't say a word. I just kept my mouth shut. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I'd said something to her because I guarantee you she was tired, she was stressed out, she wasn't thinking clearly, but she had that money folded up, stuck in, the, in her mouth while she was pumping gas. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So be cautious, use your common sense, think clearly, wipe everything down. You know, I went to Bojangles in Canton yesterday and got food to provide for a family. The mom had just had surgery and um, on top of having surgery, ends up with pneumonia. So I wanna ask you to please say a prayer for Riker's other nanny. Um, Gigi Bear had surgery on Friday and she ended up with, or on Thursday, and she ended up with, oh my gosh, I got a call coming in on my phone. She ended up with pneumonia and they had to take her back to the hospital yesterday. So prayer request today, We've got a prayer request for 
Eddie Brackett, Freddie's daddy, who is right now in Cherokee in the hospital, for Amadale Whitzel, who has been going through more chemo, and for Yvonne Heller, who is trying to recover from this surgery, but she has pneumonia now. So please say a prayer for all of them. And you know, when I took the food down there to them, I didn't even go inside because I don't want to risk me getting any kind of thing. Riker has a cold, Catherine has a cold, and now Yvonne has pneumonia. And I'm like, I want them to take care of themselves. I might have a germ I would give to them on me because I've been out in the public. So just think clearly and think about the people you love and protect them. But I didn't feel like I didn't need to go to Bojangles and get food. I felt like I needed to provide a meal for them. And the best way to do it was to get it from Bojangles because they follow safety measures. They have all the things in place they need to, to serve the public. And so don't be afraid to still, you know, still do what you can to feel safe and secure and choose places that you know are clean and they work by the codes that they should and they are governed by a health situation that they're taking care of their customers and themselves. So let's let's don't stop living because of this crazy stuff. Now, also, there's something really good happening here in Gilmer County on Wednesday. The Gilmer County Food Pantry is going to be open to the public to provide food and meals and whatever they can to create meals for children in the system who are not getting a meal at school. And Cherokee County and Pickens County are doing lunches at the schools. And I'm not sure how they're distributing them. I think it's a drive up and pick up kind of thing. But check with Pickens County. They have all of that covered. Cherokee County is covering it. And I understand that Cherokee County has a limited budget for that. I'm not sure how long they're going to be able to do it. But please check with your schools because we know that the one people that are going to really be hurting. I made a pot of vegetable beef soup last night. And I made enough soup to serve about 30 people. And I'm taking it to the office today. Now, I've sanitized everything in my kitchen. I'm very cautious about what I do. And then I'll be sharing it with, with friends and, and neighbors. You can do that. You know, if you have the ability to do that, just use caution. And if you know a family that has children that are at home, maybe you could make a little extra soup. Maybe you could make some chicken and dumplings. Maybe you could do something. Because the school children that often depend on the lunches and the breakfast that they're served, aren't going to be getting that. So we need to take care of them. And that's very, very important. So again, the Gilmer Food Pantry will be open. It's located on Highway 52 East, out just before you get to RNA Orchards. So um, check with them on Wednesday. They are going to be open to the public. And if you need some help in feeding your school-aged children, that's a great way to do it. And again, please prayers for um, Eddie and for Amadale and for sweet Yvonne. And if you have been looking at Facebook and that's where you're getting all your advice, don't do it. Don't do it. Go to the CDC.gov and they will tell you how they're dealing with this crisis, what, they, what their plans are, what the steps are that they're taking, and listen to them. You know, don't listen to what everybody says on Facebook and what everybody, oh, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. Yes, you can. Just be, be cautious. Don't stop living your life. Now, the one thing I wouldn't do, I'm not going right now to movie theaters. I don't go to movie theaters much anyway. But because you think about wiping everything down, do they take the time to wipe everything down? And, and all you have to do, I've got a, <clears throat> this is my little bag of my wipes. And I just take them and I wipe down car door handles, whatever. Just be cautious. Just be cautious. But let's don't stop living. Let's don't let this virus stop us from being the strong America that we are. Today, I can tell you gas was 182.9 at the racetrack and the quick trip in Pickens County. And they're saying that because of the price per um, drum right now of the oil, it's going to get down to 125. I hope that's not true. As much as I like cheap gas, the cheaper it gets, the lower the economy goes. The interest rate rates were dropped yesterday to less than 1%. We have people buying homes now who are going to get a deal of a lifetime because they're buying a home when the, the can you imagine that? I paid interest rates up to 21.5, less than 1% today. The feds dropped it on a Sunday. Now think about that. The president asked them to do this, to 
jumpstart the economy again. So if you're looking to buy a home, today is your lucky day. The interest rates, if you lock in right now, are less than 1%. And you could get loans from 1% to 3%. Think about that. That is unheard of. So it, we're even talking to people who want to buy farms because they're like, never in my lifetime would I have an opportunity to buy a farm. at It's almost interest free. So it's just amazing. So it is not the time to panic. It is not the time to stop living. It is the time to live wisely and to carry this around with you. Spray your Lysol. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your friends and neighbors, and be very cautious around elder, elderly people. I can say that at Northside Cherokee, when you enter the hospital, they have one way that you enter. They check your temperature, they ask you, have you been in a foreign country? And then they will let you enter the hospital if you have not and if you don't have a temperature. They're being cautious. Let's all just be cautious. Let's take care of ourselves and then we'll be fine. We'll be fine and dandy in just a few weeks. I hope that we will be over this. The good thing about this is spring is coming, hot temperatures are coming, and this virus doesn't like heat. So let's heat it up. Let's just sit around and say, okay, Lord, please bring spring. And the other thing we can do together is to continue to pray for this nation, pray for the recovery, Pray for everybody to be safe. Um, there's a gentleman over in Floyd County who had the virus and then his wife caught it. She is in serious condition right now, so please pray for them because they are, after all, Floyd County is one of our neighbors. Please pray for them. And let's get through this and let's do it wisely. Don't hit the Dollar General and, and raid all the shelves and buy everything, every paper towel there, all the toilet paper there. That's foolishness. You know, just take care of your family and do it, you know, maybe two week to a four, four week supply. That's all you need. You don't need a year's worth of paper towels or toilet paper. That's crazy. So, all right, we're gonna go to a commercial break and then we're gonna come back and you're gonna get to see some footage that's, golly, like oh, 10 years old. Um, this is Chase Harwell and Chandler Smith as they were racing over at Lanier Motor Speedway. Lanier's not even open anymore. And I know you NASCAR race car fans are like stressing out because we didn't get the Atlanta Motor Speedway race in this weekend. But they're going to do it. They're going to reschedule that. So I'm going to take you back to a kid who is now dominating ARCA. He is amazing and he's from Pickens County, Georgia. So you're going to get to meet Chandler right now. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. When traveling internationally, know where you're going and what the environment is. Also, don't dress to stick out. Dress to blend in with the environment and the culture. Make sure that you put minimal information on your luggage tags. The airlines actually track your bags, which you can follow through your app anywhere domestically and internationally. Also have a medical plan. We have mobilized rescue system. These systems are the only integrated medical technology that can integrate to your phone and be used abroad and domestically for any medical emergency that you have. If you have any questions or concerns about travel security or training, please contact Hype International. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi, 
not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. You have never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days Uh-oh You are everything I need Happy ever after will be Couldn't even dream a better Couldn't even dream a better way
Hey guys. Okay, we're going to advance now to where we interview um, Chandler and Chase. These kids were, were young kids starting out with uh, racing over at Lanier Motorsports Park. It is amazing to see how far Chandler has come. He, you know, all his family's support, all the travels, all the hard, tough hours they have all put in to make this possible for this young man, but it would never have worked had he not have an, had a driving talent. So he definitely has that, and when he run, won the ARCA race at Phoenix, I loved coming by the Pickens High School and they had congratulations, Chandler. There were signs all over Jasper, and this kid started as just a young kid over at Lanier Motorsport Sport Park. The park isn't even open anymore, but when you look at in the last 10 years, he has accomplished so much. So let's follow his career, and we're going to go back to an interview. There's um, actually Chase Harwell was on there with him. He was racing too, and Chase went on to race a little bit more. But then they moved to Miami, and he actually is in college now and doing great, and just a really, really good kid. So, so both of them ended up following their dream, just a little different, a different choice of dreams. So we're going to go back to the interviews now. watching you for a couple of years. You started out with go-karts, didn't you? Did you win in go-karting? You did not. You won once. Okay. Why did you move to quarter midgets? Do you like it better than go-karts? You had a bad wreck? Well, I've seen some bad wrecks in go-karts. It's scary, isn't it? Now, how old are you right now? Seven. Seven. And your family's from Jasper. Can we tell everybody who your mom is? Yeah, I know who your mom is. Who's mom? What's mom's name? A lot of people will know your mom. That's right. Lori McGee, right? Oh, From, call her that. Yes, you do you still call her that? <laughs> well, let's talk about your family and racing. Your family's helped you a lot, haven't they? Uh, uh, those two have it. Those two have too. <laughs> mom mom and grandma are at every race. I always see your mom and your Not grandma. Every race. <laughs> Almost every race. Well, are you going to be going to North Carolina next weekend? And what are you going to be racing there? Uh, uh, Corner Okay, what town are you going to be in? Do you know? But a lot of travel going on in your life right now? Yes, okay. Now, how many miles away from home have you been racing? I have no idea. Have you been to Florida? You have? Okay, that's a long way from home. Do y'all travel in a motor home or do you just get motel rooms? How do you handle that? Yeah, that's an easy way to do it, isn't it? Well, you won. Did you win your heat race today? You did. Well, good for you. And we're going to take a break right now and you're going to come back out on the track in just a little bit. You're going to win that one too? Absolutely. Now, let's talk about safety issues. Did you wear a Hans device today when you raced? That's important, isn't it? Um, there was a wreck right before you raced. And that kid was hurt, uh, not too bad. He came off the track a little bit banged up, a little bit beat up. Has your car ever been banged up and beat up? Not this one? Good. Good. Well, have you got anything you want to say to kids who may be out there wanting to encourage their parents to let them race? No? No? Just go for it? Okay. All right. Thanks, Chandler. We're in Gainesville, Georgia, and we just watched a couple of heat races, and the young man I'm talking to, Chase, did you win one of those races? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Now, are you used to winning? Not that much, but yeah. It feels good to win? Yes, yes it, it does, does feel good to win. Talk a little bit about how long you've been racing. Well, I've been racing for about two years, really, and so far it's been pretty good progress with the car. Okay. Now, you live in the Ball Ground area? Yes, I do. Where do you go to school? Elementary. Okay, what grade are you in? Uh, fourth grade. How many of your classmates race? Zero. Zero. So you are one in a thousand. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? And you'll go in on Monday one in a thousand as a winner. Do you expect to win the next race you're in this afternoon? I kind of do. Good. Good for you. Good positive attitude. Now let's talk a little bit about what it takes to race. I know your parents brought you here in your motorhome and your dog's with you, so it's a family affair, isn't it? 
Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Who is responsible for making sure your car is in good condition to go out on the track? My dad, Billy Harper. And does he have anything to do with building it, or did you buy it like it is? I just bought it like it is. Okay. How, some changes. Has he? How fast does your car go? About 35 to 40 miles per hour. Okay, and it's a quarter midget? Yes, it is. Okay, did you ever race go-karts? No, I have not. No, okay. Why did you get interested in racing? Well, really, I just got inspired by a book that I read, and I just wanted to start. Good. Now, do you like to read? A lot. Good for you. Good job. Now, we're going to stop this interview for just a second. We're going to bring Mom and Dad on, so hang on just a minute, okay? Okay, Chase, I want you to introduce the people standing by you now. Who have we got on board? Mom and Dad. Okay. Without Mom and Dad, could you race? No, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Talk about what it's like as a family. Do you start getting ready on Thursday night? We do. Yeah, and, sometimes before then. And Mom, you pack the motor home. And I you're, do. you're responsible for the food and the water and the drinks and clothes. the clean sheets and the clothes. And all Dad has to do is sit in the recliner until time to load up. Yeah. <laughs> Dad is four days getting the cars ready. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It really is a family affair. Now, Dad, what does it take for you to get this kid ready to race? Well, I have to get his mind right first. Uh huh. The positive cars, attitude is important. Positive attitude. And then, as far as the cars, I go through the cars to make sure there's nothing been from races before and make sure the tires are in good shape and all the safety gear is in good shape. And then, we come out there and practice on Thursdays or Fridays and see what the car's going to do because the cars change with weather conditions. Uh -huh. And then we go racing on Saturday. Let's talk about safety factors. I know he wears a Hans device. Yes, he does. It's, it's not a requirement in the sport, but you, the minimum you have to wear is a neck collar. Uh -huh. And um, but we have a Hans for him. They also make a tucker that, that the monster truck people wear and everything. And, they have to have a five-point safety harness strapped in, a fireproof suit, arm restraints to keep the arms inside the car in case it rolls over or a car hits right. or something. And then they also have to have a helmet and gloves. Now, we just saw a rollover wreck, and um, we had a motto when my son was racing, you never put a million-dollar head in a five-dollar helmet. Helmets That's are correct. so important. Helmets are so important. Right. What kind of features do you have on his helmet that are exceptional? They're they're all they have to all meet the standards for uh, USAC racing. Mm -hmm. They have a standard and um, an impact and, and the fire resistance to them. And um, also with the fire suits, they have to be 3.2 CFI. So safety is the main thing. It is. Now, and we have to say you're lucky because you're 45 minutes from home. Basically, you're at a track very close to your home. A lot of kids race the southeast. Do you have visions of him doing that? Are you going to stick with close to home tracks? Uh, well, last year we ran North Carolina, Nashville, Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, over at uh, another local track coming Georgia. So so far, you're five hours from home. Is your farthest Within track? Five, yes. Within mm -hmm. five hours okay. now. Uh, with the USAC racing series, they, they have a lot more tracks, I mean, for us, for our series. Uh, they have, we're going to Disney World race. Uh -huh. And then they also, there's a USAC track down there, the Tampa track. Mm -hmm. well, we've got just a few minutes. We're going to wrap this up. Chase, is there anything you'd like to tell your parents about how, um, are you thankful that they help you as much as they do? Yes, I am. Yeah, you couldn't do it without them. You couldn't do it without them. Now, do they have this? Do you have to keep your grades up in order to race? Uh, I've never gotten a lot of a lot of grades. That's yet. good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, mom, who's in charge here? If he came in with bad grades, would you say we're not racing this weekend? Absolutely. Good. It's never been a problem. So it gives him an incentive. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, he, he seems like he's an altogether very positive kid, and, and I think that's the attitude NASCAR is looking for. They want kids who have the whole package, and um, they have to understand that this is not its not easy for y'all. Now, right. let's talk about cost. If you put a dollar figure on what you spend a year in racing, could you do that? Oh, your, your biggest expense is when you first, when you first get started. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you build a little bit at a time. Right. Um, you know, you start out, we start out with a car that costs $1,700, mm -hmm. and then he had a growth spurt and outgrew it, and we 
ran it for the first six months, then we bought another car. Okay. Are we up to ten thousand dollars yet? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it is a commitment the parents make, and it's important that the children understand how important it is for them to keep their end of the deal up. Because with mom and dad not footing the bill, wouldn't happen. I don't see any sponsors on your car. That means mom and dad are responsible for all That's the bills, correct. huh? We would love to have, We'd a love to have a sponsor. Yes, yes you would. Uh, yes you would. But we haven't went out and you know pursued yeah. them and, and with the economy it's hard Exactly. To, well maybe um, soon the economy will turn around and somebody will be willing to sponsor people. Yes, ma'am. And with the you know, with us switching over to USAC racing, they're affiliated with Hoosier. Mm -hmm. And that's a big cost. I see Hoosier tires coming out. Yeah, maybe Hoosier tires would give you some tires. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be awesome. Would Wouldn't be. that be awesome? It would be very awesome. But they um but running the Hoosier tires last year, we ran a different uh, make of tire, and you could only run them two races, mm -hmm. and they were done. Right. And um, with the Hoosier tires, we're looking to run six to eight races. That's great. On, That's great. And, and the cost is the same. I see a purple Hoosier shirt in his future. What do you say? Uh, yeah. so definitely, so. definitely. We yeah. The, now listen, Sasha. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Side, so. That's right. Well, um, he seems like he is really together, and I hope he keeps his positive attitude because that goes a long way with everything in life. Um, Chase, it was nice meeting you. I look forward to you winning today's race, and then we'll have you on the show when y'all get back. You're going to Florida for spring break, is that right? Yes. Well, when you get home, uh, call us and let's have him back on. Let's have him on the show live one morning. Okay. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, I loved seeing those two young boys. I had forgotten that Chandler was that young. He was only seven years old. That is wild. And then Chase was in the fourth grade. And uh, Chase, again, they've moved on. They live in Miami now. But such an altogether good, good kid and great family. So that was that was neat to be able to share them with you. And I'm so glad we had that footage. And it was done with my little Sony camera that I bought years ago. So pretty cool, pretty cool. That is truly a, a racing memory because, again, whoever thought Chandler Smith would be as young as he is, he is winning ARCA races and a lot of commitment, a lot of time, a lot of energy put into it by his family and people who support him and, and his great fans. So, all right, we're going to go now to the Barker Brothers because when I look back on the history of how ETC began doing what they're doing, last night I had this wild and crazy dream, y'all, and it was about this studio had been transformed into just, it was like hee-haw. It was a whole bunch of people and bales of hay and, and food and laughter. And it was it was like, you know, it was really cool. And I was sitting there watching it and I thought of all the guitars and all the banjos and all the musicians who've been here. And the one family that really stood out for me is of course the Barker Brothers. So I want to share some of the music. These are the Barker Brothers who have gone on to do other things in life. They are not performing with their family except at church events and, and on an occasional time. But, but man, we loved traveling with them. We loved watching them. We loved watching them grow. For everybody who watched the Barkers here on ETC, you know that, that poor little Jonathan was so tiny, his banjo was about bigger than he was. But they have grown up to be great, successful young men, and uh, we're going to honor them a little bit today by sharing some of their music with you. So here we go to the Barker Brothers. Down as if he's trying to go Touches me and says See you're traveling along By the way son You forgot to
Yesterday, our president asked that everybody, um, we have a national day of prayer. And you know, we should pray every single day for our country, for the families that are being affected by this terrible virus and by the people who have lost their lives. But more than that, we should pray for recovery because we are going to recover. America is going to recover from this. And why don't we take this couple of weeks that they've asked us to slow down, possibly not go to work, not be around people, use this social distancing. Why don't we use this time to spend some time with our children and our grandchildren? Well, I can't be around Riker now because he and Catherine both have a cold and I don't want to even, the possible, possible thing that I would transmit it to Freddie's mom and dad would be horrible. So I'm trying to be really cautious. But if your grandchildren are healthy and you can spend some time with them, now would be a great time. Just sanitize them, make sure that they, you know, wash and that they're aware of things, but spend some time teaching them to cook. We're gonna share a recipe right now. This is Nana's Nest, and my dear buddy, Lucy Van Doren, taught me to make this. Lucy recently went to be with the Lord after a long battle with Alzheimer's. She was amazing. She loved kids. She loved teaching them to cook. She loved sharing recipes, and she was one of my greatest cheerleaders. And um, between she and Fred Wyndham, producing Heart of the Home was so much fun. And so we have chosen some recipes today we're going to share. This, this one that's Nana's Nest is a very simple one, but it does involve grease. So if you're doing it with your grandchildren, be careful and don't let them get burned because you do it in a little uh, fry daddy or whatever to do the shell. But it is so cool and you can do it seasonal. You can do it red, white, and blue with strawberries and blueberries for 4th of July. You can do it and do it as Nana's Nest as Easter is approaching, but it's just a really cool recipe for children. So we're going to share that with you now and then I'll be back in just a few minutes. Um, I'm so honored. I want my guest to introduce himself to you. Hello, I'm uh, Sergeant Major Tony Gate in the United States Army. Tony lives in Tate, Georgia, and Tony and I spent last Easter together, but it was an email, wasn't it? Yeah. Email, yes. you were in Baghdad, That's you right. attended a sunrise service in Baghdad while we were here attending church. Um, you're home, you're safe, I'm so grateful. Communicating with you was wonderful because I knew when the guys were coming home, we were placing yellow ribbons for your 
um, group of fellows that came home. When did 48th Brigade? 48th Brigade, yes. 48th Brigade um, safely came home. I was so pleased. I was so pleased with the neighborhood. Everybody turned out and everybody supported you. And it was such a pleasure to know that we knew, you know, when you were coming, when the guys were going to be there. It was easy to coordinate because we could email across the world. We could email. So it was wonderful. It was one of the most special days of my life. I guarantee uh, you. And, and it was for Jasper. It was for Jasper. Thank you. Um, he's here for Easter. And we're going to share a recipe that my adopted mama, Lucy Van Doren, created. It's called Nana's Nest. The ingredients for this recipe are a um, flour tortilla shell. And I must tell you, you can't use the fat free. You need the fat. So... And then um, with that, we um, will fry that. Then cinnamon, sugar, ice cream. We're going to decorate it with coconut that we're going to dye green that will look like grass. Okay. That'll be your job. <laughs> the topping ingredients are fresh pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. And do I get to be the general in this episode? Can I be your hey, boss? You're in charge. Oh, I'm in charge. I, I'm I never in charge. Well. Oh, good, good. We're starting with a tortilla shell. We're going to fold it in half. The pattern is a star, because when this comes out, it actually looks like a jagged edge that an egg would come out of when an egg is hatched. All right. And you're going to cut this for me. Boy, you mind good. I like men who take orders. I bet your wife likes that, too. You got it? There you I'm go. The pattern. There you go. There you go. Just hold it down till it cooks. How, long, how do I know how when it's done? Just it takes about probably 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. So now we're going to take it out with this appliance. There you go, so you can drain the grease. Cool. That's pretty good. I think you're hired. <laughs> Sit it down there. Right. Now, we've taken our hot nest, and we are going to cover it in cinnamon and sugar. That was quick, huh? You did a good job. You did a good job. Now, we're going to make grass. We're going to make right. coconut grass. Now, I want you to put me about three drops of green food coloring in there. Right. We're going to start with about three drops. Okay, our grass is done. We're going to put a little bit of grass around the nest, and then we'll put a little bit on top of it. But we are going to start with a scoop of peach ice cream. Now, your job is to garnish this, and I want you okay. to just be creative. I'm not gonna fuss, I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do. You just do what you think you would like. Pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. Nope. Tony, we're almost finished. What does a nest need? We well, got bird eggs, but no birds, so how I see a bird. A peep. Wow. All right. There you go. There you go. Guys, this has been, honestly, my favorite heart of the home, my best guest. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what you do for a living. Thank you so much for everything you do for Thank our country. Um, Y'all keep in touch. Email your soldiers. Remember, they're over there fighting for us. Keep in touch with them. Thank you again. Thanks. Love you. To memories in okay, that is such a simple, fun recipe. And again, remember, you can do it you can do it Easter and do it as Nana's Nest, and then you can do it other times of the year, and you could do it red, white, and blue for the 4th of July by using strawberries and blueberries and some ice cream. You can change it up and do it however you want it, but it is such a cool idea, and Mama Lucy came up with that. I don't know how she did that. She was a very, very smart lady in the kitchen, but that's a really cool recipe to do with your grandchildren, and just the shell rolled in cinnamon is actually good. It, you will like that, too. So, But again, remember, she said you can't do it with fat-free because it doesn't work. It doesn't hold up like it needs to, so it needs that fat content in it, so, so check that out. You know, y'all, we're in a crisis. We're in a crisis mode in our country, but we have to also be in a prayerful mode and, and think about each other and take care of each other. If you know of somebody who may live alone and maybe they haven't gotten to go out to the store, maybe they didn't get to get the products they needed, check on your neighbors. There's somebody out there that you can reach out and help. 
and say a prayer for everybody because um, we are a praying nation and we know that prayer works and right now we need to pray our way through this it's actually a disaster that's just been thrown at us and there's nothing we can do about it other than just take hold and hold each other and and hold each other up in prayer and and just let's stay strong because America is so strong when I was sitting there looking at Tony I remembered as they came home when you're thinking of Iraq and Afghanistan and all the things that our soldiers deal with every single day what we're facing today is minor compared to what they have seen on the the fields of war they come home and often the veterans are forgotten as we approach Easter as we're getting through this crisis don't forget our American soldiers without them we would not have the freedoms that we have today without them we couldn't even pray publicly so please say a prayer for them and and please continue to, to lift each other in prayer again I'm going to ask you to pray for our, our sweet cousin Amadel Whitzel because her her medical team is at Kennestone Hospital, and I know that all the hospitals are just crunched down to the max because there's so much going on. And there are so many things they're trying to resolve and take care of and keep people safe. And again, if you do go visit a hospital, if you have somebody in the hospital, be very cautious on what germs you may take into the hospital, but also be cautious when you leave the hospital, when you get home, that you just basically sanitize yourself from the steering wheel of your car to the door handle of your car to stepping out of your clothes when you come home and just throwing them all in the washing machine, including your shoes, and just take care of you. And again, what you got here you know usually I run around with a bottle of perfume this is not perfume this is Lysol but it's very important in today's world that we take care of ourselves and those that we love because we have the ability to stop this we have the ability to stop the madness too because we need to just cool calm collected think smart and um, be patient be kind I want to ask some prayers for a family on Friday, it was Friday the 13th, and um, I was getting some bad news on some stuff I'd been working on a long time, and you know, we got something that hasn't quite come together yet, and I'm just getting really stressed about it. And at the same time, a young woman in Cherokee County lost her life from a wreck that they think was caused by somebody else. There was a black vehicle involved in the crash that killed a young woman, a young mother of two children at Airport Road on 575. If you were a witness to any of this, if you saw the black car that caused this wreck, would you please call Cherokee County Sheriff's Department and please let them know. And at the same time, pray for these two children and for the mom and the dad and the family that are left behind because this young woman lost her life. My world went upside down when this happened because Catherine drives an SUV. Catherine is always driving Riker around and when you hear there's been a wreck, it's on 575, it's a mom and a child in a car, you know where your mind goes. And so I was so stressed and, and this was a young woman in her 20s with her child in the car. Somebody caused this accident. Be mindful of others. Be considerate of others. Don't get out there and do crazy things on the road that could end a family and end a life forever. So please, um, please be kind and please be nice to everybody. And we can make it through this crisis we're dealing with. I'll see you again tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And I hope that you stay positive and stay focused and, and stay in prayer. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.